Hello all, uh, welcome to this video where we look at the symmetry properties of circular functions. So we're going to look at sine, cos and tan and this, well, as I just said, the, the symmetry associated with certain angles. As we work our way around the unit circle, we'll notice that certain patterns occur. Uh, this is exercise 14e, okay? and it's building from our understanding of sine, cos and tan as geometric identities within the unit circle. So a quick reminder, if we look at the unit circle here on the right, um, say if we did, we wanted to find sine of 30 degrees, so we've got a 30 degree line right there. What is sine of 30 degrees? It is defined as the vertical height. How long is that line? Okay. So if we go across okay, and read off the, effectively the y coordinate of that point, we will see that sine of 30 is equal to half, okay, or 0.5, using the display units on that unit circle. And then if we think of cos of 30, just as a quick reminder, cos is the horizontal component of that line. So how long is that line, its horizontal component? And that is approximately 0 0.9. Okay. Now it might be a little bit less, it might actually be 0 0.88, we might say. Around there. Okay, trying to read it off. Uh, so that's a quick reminder. And then 10 is if we drew a tangent line how long is that line until it goes to the x-axis, okay? That's one way of defining it, or if we continued this up until it hit the tangent at, drawn from theta equals zero. Uh, but that's just a quick reminder. Um, go back and check the notes if you need a little bit more coverage on that, because you need to have a really sound understanding of geometrically what each of these are to be able to recognize the patterns of symmetry. So let's have a look at what this table here, and if you had the printed notes, uh, you'll notice this is different. I uh, There was mistakes in um, your notes, and what's written in here, uh, all of those ones and all of those ones in those three quadrants, um, I hadn't done the adjustments to them properly. So you'll need to fix those up. Now this looks all very confusing. This looks all very confusing, but it is <clears throat> just repeating patterns. That's all we're looking for. Okay. And then with that, thinking geometrically or on the Cartesian plane, when is it, when's my X or my Y values going to be positive or negative? There's certain patterns that occur. And you're used to seeing the result of all of this is that all values are positive there, sine is positive there, tan is positive there, and cos is positive there. Okay. We will look and show you geometrically why that occurs, what's the patterns that occur. So, if, let's start with some angle. Let's choose, let's do sine of 30 again. Okay, so we start with sine of 30. Okay. So we're going to try it. Um, we'll let theta equal 30, that follows on sine of 30, if we come across here, okay, as we just said, that is equal to 0 0.5. So sine theta in the first quadrant is going to be positive, and we can read that off. It's quite obvious that our y coordinate at that point, or the vertical component, is positive. It's gone up. What happens now, though, if we ask about sine of pi minus 30, okay, or remember 30 is pi on 6, okay, we could say pi on 6, so we go sine minus pi on 6. Okay. Where's that? Well, that is over here. And what do we notice? Okay, 
because what we've affected with, and that's going to give us 0 0.5. We get the same answer, and that's what this says. Okay. If we go to psi pi minus whatever our original angle is, that's the same as just sine of that angle. Okay. Sine of 150 is the same as sine of 30, and we can see that geometrically. Okay. What is this actually saying? What's this? Looking over here at the left, what is this formula or shortcut or cheat or whatever you want to call it or pattern? What is it physically saying? It's saying that if we go, we get blue, if we go all the way round to pi, okay, we've gone all the way round to pi, and then we go back my theta because it's minus theta, I'm going to have the same as. The sine value is going to be the same as just going up theta. And we can see that, yeah? If we go all the way around to pi and then up theta, it's exactly the same as just going up theta in the first place. Okay, if we're going to end up, up if we're going to end up going up, okay, our y coordinate, we're going to be up the same amount. Our vertical component is going to be the same. Now that's probably the easiest pattern to see. Probably the easiest pattern to see. What if we now think about cos of the let, let theta equal 30 and then cos of theta is equal to, well that's the horizontal component. Okay, and we said before it's about 0 0.88. Now that's just you looking at this graphically, your calculator will tell you much uh, more accurate number. And that's pi on six, okay. What is cos now of pi minus pi on six? Okay, because we've just done cos pi minus theta. Okay. What is that? Okay. Well, let's look at it geometrically okay we go round pi back up theta and we're at this point again we're at 5 pi on 6 and if I come down the horizontal component okay that's what cos is asking for it's asking the horizontal component is negative 0 0.88 okay so we've got cos pi minus pi on 6 is equal to the negative of cos pi on 6. Whatever cos pi on 6, if we go all the way around pi and then back up pi on 6, we've gotten the exact same number, it's just the negative value of it. And again, we can see instead of being positive, that's positive, that's negative, they're equivalent. Okay, geometrically the magnitude of the size, okay, this the distance there, these two distances, they're equal. It's just their sign has changed. And that's what all these pattern rules are showing. Okay. There are repetitions, okay? If we now and it's almost always working from the x-axis okay you'll notice that uh, in quadrant 2 we go to pi and then back theta go to quadrant 3 we go to pi then add theta on again if we want to go to quadrant 4 we go all the way around to pi and then back theta so if we want to work so we've been dealing with this pi on 6 okay we could go all the way around to 2 pi and then I can go back theta is equal to 30 and I get that and look what happens okay cos of 2 pi minus pi on 6 is going to be equal to 0 0.88 it's exactly the same as cos of pi on 6 we get the same result Okay, the horizontal distance is the same. But what is sine? Sine of 2 pi minus pi on 6 
is equal to, okay, we know from before that pi on 6, that was equal to 0 0.88, but we've gone down, we've got a negative y value, so it's just going to be negative 0 0.88. So this is why we spent so long looking at what sine, cos, and tan are geometrically so we can start to recognize these patterns. We have in any quadrant, okay, sorry, in any unit circle, we have four angles that show symmetry. Okay, uh, the sign of the outcome might change because is it for sign is it positive or is it negative y value for cos is it positive or negative x value, um, but we're always going to end up with these four sort of angles within a unit circle that express symmetry. Okay. That they equivalent to the same because over here that's zero point eight eight, over here that's negative zero point eight eight. Over here, that's negative 0 0.88. And that can occur for any figure. Okay, and it's just following this pattern as shown in the table on the left. So, to show another really obvious one, let's do 60 degrees. There's 60 degrees. Okay. Now the next symmetry, it, okay, we need to think of, well, that's pi on 3. Our next symmetry is go round to pi and then back pi on 3 again. So it's up there. That will show symmetric uh, sine and cos values. And then same thing, we could go round to pi and then plus plus pi on 3 you get that and then same thing in the fourth quadrant all four of these angles 5 pi on 3, 4 pi on 3, 2 pi on 3, pi on 3 okay they have symmetric sine and cos values their value, they're positive or negative, if they're positive or negative, their sign changes, obviously, depending on what quadrant they're in, but they've all effectively got the same magnitude of cos and sine. So that's what that table shows. Now, it might become a little bit easier uh, on the next slide when we try and start to use these. Try and start to use these. Oops, slide. Okay. Right here, okay. So there's two things we can take from the previous diagram. Uh, where is each trigonomic function, sine, cos, or tan, positive or negative, and how to find a solution for a trigonomic, trigonometric function in each of the four quadrants, okay. If sine of x is equal to 0 0.3, find the value of sine pi plus x, okay. So we have some angle x, okay, we have some angle x where we then take sine of it is equal to 0 0.3. So let, let's work backwards. We won't need to in future do a, need to have a, a full unit circle in front of us, but it helps when first showing. Okay. So sine of x is equal to 0 0.3. So that means the horizontal component of some angle, we go around some angle, is equal to x, 
the sorry the vertical component of it is 0 0.3 okay so it means we need to get up to there so if I go across that's right there on the unit circle so that's going to be my angle Ooh, that's not my vertical on my okay so the angle right there that is x okay what is it? Well, x is maybe roughly equal to maybe 18 degrees. Might be 18 degrees, but that's that's neither here nor there. Okay, we don't need to actually know the value of x to solve the rest of these because we're told the outcome of it. Okay, we're told the vertical component already, and that's what we're being asked to find. We're asked to find. The vertical component, the vertical component, the vertical component, but just at some other location. So let's do A. We'll do A in green. Okay. So sine pi plus x. That's telling me I'm going to go around pi, and then I'm going to go around x again, and that's going to put me there okay now again x we know roughly it's 18 degrees let's go on round okay it's put us in the third quadrant if we go pi we've gone 180 plus some means we're in the third quadrant okay therefore it's going to be a negative yeah the y value is going to be negative we can see that okay how long is this length there our y value, well it's going to be negative and we're told it was the vertical component was 0 0.3 so it is equal to negative 0 0.3 over here that's 0 0.3 therefore over here that must be equal to 0 0.3 because it's symmetric we've gone around 180 and then just x so we've got we get the same symmetrical y component and then we just have to figure out our sign. Have a go at b. Okay, b is going round to pi then back x. So we go all the way around to pi and then we're going to come back x we end up here okay. since we're told the vertical component of when of sine of x is 0 0.3 that means the vertical component of this is 0 0.3 and is it positive or negative well it is going to be negative so again we're in the fourth quadrant Therefore, sine is equal to a negative. Therefore, it is equal to negative 0 0.3. Erase some of this just to make space for part C. Okay, part C. Sine of 3 pi minus x. Well, what is 3 pi? 3 pi is equal to 2 pi plus pi. So if you want to think in degrees, that's the same as 360 plus 180. Okay, so we're going to go black. We're going to go round once, that's 2 pi. Round again. So that's my 3 pi going round, and then I'm going to go backwards, negative x. So we're going to go round that way. So we've ended up there. We know the vertical component of x is 0 0.3, so we know this has to be 0 0.3. We've ended up in the second quadrant. Therefore, sine is going to be positive. Yeah. Therefore, it is equal to 0 
so all we're really doing in all of these problems is we're finding the original angle, whatever the original angle was, but it's probably going to end up in a different quadrant. So all you're then having to think is, well, is it going to be positive or negative in that quadrant? So in quadrant two, uh, sign is positive. In quadrant three, sign is negative. In quadrant four, sign is negative again. So we're just finding its equivalent position somewhere else in the unit circle. Okay, this problem is a little bit harder. It's a bit of a process of elimination. Okay. Cos of x is equal to negative cos pi on 3. And x is between pi and 3 pi on 2. Find the value of x. Okay. So what is this saying? Cos... Let's do that again. Let's start with this. Cos of x is equal to negative cos pi on 3. Okay, so negative cos pi on 3. So let's break that down first off. We could also rearrange this as negative cos x is equal to cos pi on 3. What's cos of pi on 3? Let's come to our unit circle quickly. There's pi on 3. Draw my line in. Cos is asking for the horizontal component. So that is equal to half. There was 0 0.5. So we now have negative cos of x is equal to 0 0.5. But now we can get cos of x is equal to negative 0 0.5. Now I've gone a bit of a roundabout way to get to this. I didn't need to do that. I didn't need to switch the negative over and then switch it back to the right hand side. I could have left it on the right hand side, but just to show you cos pi on three. What is cos pi on three? I wanted it just to be a positive to show you where it is. Okay. But I need an x where it gives me negative 0 0.5. So I need some angle that gives me a horizontal component of negative 0 0.5. Okay, should I just do it? That green doesn't show up very good on that one. Negative 0 0.5. I need some angle that gives me that horizontal component. Well, there's two angles that can give me that. I could go up here. That gives me negative 0 0.5 as a horizontal component. Or I could also have this angle here, that also gives me horizontal components. So what are those angles? Well, around here, we could just read it off. It's two pi on three, okay? But thinking in terms of our symmetry from this, okay, we had here, that first one was around pi on three. So we could go to pi, and then I could go back pi on 3. So that's going to give me 2 pi on 3. Okay. So theta can equal, or x actually we're using in this case, x could equal to pi minus pi on 3, which is equal to 2 pi on 3. Or x could be equal to pi plus pi on 3 okay, because I could go round a pi and then go round another pi on 3 so that's going to be equal to 4 pi on 3 so that was just working off this first bit okay, just getting the correct horizontal component I needed a horizontal component of negative 0 0.5 and I have two angles that will achieve that for me. It's either going to be 2 pi on 3 or 4 pi on 3. I now have a condition though 
it says x must be between pi and 3 pi on 2. So that's saying it must be in this quadrant. Yeah? Between pi and 3 pi on 2. So that rules out all of that. Okay? It can't be that angle. It's not allowed to be that angle. It's not allowed to be 2 pi on 3. So therefore, x is equal to 4 pi on 3. And if you substitute in, if you substitute it into this, that would work out. You put cos 4 pi on 3, find out what it is, which is equal to negative half, and then found cos pi on 3, which is half, make the negative of it, you get negative half equals negative half. So that's working with the unit circle geometrically. Uh, doing tan, you can draw diagrams again on the unit circle or little sketches yourselves, always helps. Uh, but let's try and do this uh, thinking logically without a diagram or if we do a diagram really, really small. Um, this is also doing this tan, we're going to look at negative, which negative just means going clockwise, that's a negative theta, yeah, versus going around anti-clockwise, that's if we had a positive theta, okay. So if tan of x is 1, find the value of tan negative x, okay. So if I go around some angle, my unit circle, some angle, I get a tan component that is equal to 1. What happens if I go negative x? What happens if I go the other direction? Well, we know a, s, t, c. We know we're going to end up in the fourth quadrant. Fourth quadrant. Therefore, tan is going to be negative therefore tan of negative x is equal to negative 1 we just change the sign okay tan of negative pi minus x so which quadrant are we going to end up in well we're going to go round negative pi and we're going to go round negative x we're going to end up in the second quad Therefore, tan in that quadrant is negative again. Therefore, tan of negative pi minus x is equal to negative 1. Okay, part C, we have negative 2 pi plus x. So I'm going to go around all the way around, negative 2 pi. But then I'm going to go plus x, so I have to go back this way, plus x. So I'm going to be in the first quadrant. Okay. Therefore, we know tan is positive in the first quadrant. Therefore, we get tan of negative 2 pi plus x is equal to 1. Um, that's it for exercise 14e. Um, to summarize, what is it? Uh, let's go with the process. Let's, let's start with summarizing the process. The technique, the strategy, the tactic is to figure out what quadrant are you going to be in. What's just happened? Disconnected them. Is microphone still recording? Yeah. Uh, is to figure out what quadrant you're in. Okay, now it might look complex, it might be minus 7 pi on 2 plus x, whatever, it's just you need to think physically, okay, which quadrant does that put me in, how many revolutions, am I going around once, twice, two and a half times, and then my angle, um, so, and then once you find out which quadrant you're in, you can know, well, is my sine, my cos, or my tan going to be positive or negative in that quadrant, you can think geometrically, or you can just remember the ASTC. Uh, and then from there is you just think, okay, well, what's, what would be the value of the angle if it was in the first quadrant? 
it's going to be the same equivalence. That's what this table back here is saying. Okay. The magnitude of the value, the magnitude of the X component or of the Y component, the horizontal component or the vertical component is going to be exactly the same as if the angle was in the first quadrant. You then just need to apply your sign change to it if it needs to have a sign, sign change. That's all this exercise is talking about. The angle in any other quadrant will have the same magnitude, so the same size if we ignore the sign, horizontal and vertical component. The horizontal and vertical components were the same. Yeah? If. Yeah. Yeah, that's not very straight. The horizontal and vertical component of that one there is exactly the same as the horizontal and vertical component of that one there is exactly the same as the horizontal and vertical component there and the horizontal and vertical component there. They're all exactly the same, their signs just change. And that's all this table is describing mathematically. If you have any questions, like usual, ask in class, ask on uh, Send me an email through Compass or uh, any other way that you want to get a hold of me. Uh, thanks. See ya.